Happy Monday, folks, one and all. Happy day. Hope you've had a great weekend. And if you are in the U.S. and you uh, observe Martin Luther King Day as I do, I hope you are having a good one. <clears throat> Welcome to the show. My name is Grindhead Jim, and we're here to talk toys and talk about a bunch of things. And today's topic is going to be ongoing throughout the entirety of the show uh, because I do have a hard out around six o'clock. Uh, but ultimately, I want to talk about display, and I see you guys already talking a bit, quite a bit about it, uh, which essentially boils down to everyone has different ways of displaying and storing their toys, and I want to know how that affects your enjoyment of them. Some people like to put them on the shelf and just leave them there, and for them, some of the joy is is to, is to maintaining that display. I can understand that as well. Um there is also um, people that like to do photography like Largo, and there's a certain degree of play that comes with that and so forth. So a lot of different things there. Um, and I do want to just real quickly, I see Kieran Ball, Largo, Johnny Sorensen, Ian, uh, Toy Connections, Nolan, Bjorn, Bill Wifta, who has a headache. Sorry to hear that, sir. Uh, giraffe. Um, Shane is here, and I think I got everybody cool. So, um, I want you guys to, to continue talking about these things and just kind of let me know where your head's at. You know, for me, I was originally going to take down some of these, um, these boxes and containers so I, you could see my little display over here, but the whole point of me leaving it up is to say, okay, with the space that I have... The way I'm storing here is really affecting my enjoyment of what's on the shelf. So you have to kind of make these weird decisions about um, how you're storing and so forth. And I need to make a big trip to my storage unit. It, it, it will, it has to be this week or else I'm really screwed. Uh, and I'm going to be clearing this space. So again, I'll have actual display space to show, you know. Um, Giraffe asks if I, if, if I have an Origins King Hiss in the background. Yes, I do. He is right there. He's right there. Along with Ratlore, Cobra Con, and Thunder Punch He-Man. That's what's up there right now. Bill says, I've been scattered around the room in the cardboard boxes. I get you on that one for sure. Candid. Candid photography. Could be. Could be taking a holiday. Could be. Johnny says, my closed captions were on Tiny Letter and Jim's Beard, T -E -E. <laughs> Bjorn cycles of toys display member so often. He drops like, no one puts King Hiss in the corner. I do. World of Cardboard's here. Nice to see you, John. Good to see you, brother. 
So let's go ahead and start. I've got a lot, a lot of news, and I got some pre-orders. We're gonna go through it. Uh, so first and foremost, to hit it. Uh, if you saw Jim Largo's Largo's Lair uh, Robotech review, you know this. Uh, and if you haven't, you should subscribe to Largo's Lair immediately. Did some great work over there, and there's more to come. But in honor of the RoboForce animated series, they have they're getting doing a ten percent off on the store. But they made this big announcement with animated versions of the characters. It does reveal two other characters that are going to be coming to the line. Uh, villains, in fact. So I'm very excited for that. And I hope that uh, it goes well. And given they have a background uh, as a company with doing things for Netflix and documentaries and different shows and so forth, I know they have the moxie to, to make a show happen. So it's very cool. Elephant in the room for many of you are the Indiana Jones stuff. Um, so they've got Walter Donovan with an alternate head and a grail, which I know if you want that figure, there he is kind of a thing. Um, they also have the Professor Indy, which is from Last Crusade. And someone made mention, if you think about it, that's basically... Uh, Henry Jones Sr.'s outfit in the film, essentially. So all I have to do is a slight repaint, swap out the head, and you've got a you've, you've got a, a Henry Jones Sr. at that point. So um, I, I like these. I think these look good. But there's an awful lot of goddamn indies that they're putting out first. Um, of course, you've got the Club Obi-Wan, Indiana Jones. I, I like the accessories. I think it's cool. But again, I don't know that I need this in my collection. Uh, it's cool, but I don't know. We'll see. And the Club Obi-Wan Indies Target exclusive, then Donovan and Professor New Walmart exclusive. So yay, exclusives. Really, really smart of them to do that. Super smart. And then they revealed that Temple of Doom Indie, Short Round, and the Hypnotize Indie from Temple of Doom are coming soon. All three of those I would like. Um, if not, it, definitely Temple of Doom and Short Rounds. I need like the base outfit indie from each movie, but I, I'm going to have the whole Raiders line for sure and most of Temple of Doom. Last Crusade, I'll probably pick and choose depending on what they make available, but I'm very happy that these are coming out, even if I'm not happy uh, about the way that they're doing the cadence. They're, they're, they're pulling the same stuff as like the Tiger Force uh, classified stuff. They're trying to get a lot of people to buy stuff and then reissue bucks with different paint and stuff and whatever. Um, <laughs> Rolo wants me to stop showing Motu. It's just in the background. I'm not even showing it off. Calm the down, sir. <laughs> um, just to catch up with chat here, uh, Largo says, play and display his life or spice, spice his life also. And Logic Blaster asks how it's going. It's going great. It says, nice to catch me live. It's nice to be caught live. I appreciate that. Gojatron is lurking. Thank you, brother. Welcome to the show. Kieran Ball is here. And so is Ozzy Rule. Says, I'm here after the week I have had and need it. Good. Glad you're here. Um, Ian Sweeney says, anyone hasn't watched it yet? World Money Carper has a video up about Transformers Punch Up Book from 85. Yes, it is, a, it is very good. Uh, make a beautiful backdrop for any G1 display. I agree. And Largo, those two characters in the poster are villains, which would seem to indicate that they are definitely going in that direction for for Wave 2. That'll be my guess. Uh, <laughs> Wilhelm is here, says, he chose poorly. Uh, Walter Donovan figures same legs as Thrawn. I mean, sure. Largo is unimpressed with the six-inch indie figures. Fair enough. Roman Cardboard staying on topic says, I just play with my toys and put them on a shelf or in a box. A big box. Not too many on the shelf. Mostly paper models on the shelf might be a fire hazard. I mean, they all are, if you think about it. Um, no sarcasm, Ozzy. I'm glad you're here. Uh, it, it sucks that you had a bad week, but I'm glad you're here. Um, Go to Toronto's new indie figures for your action-packed guys in suits collection, basically. Yeah, it's it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. Um, do, 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 do. 
Largo says the boxes look precariously perched. I know they look like they are, but they're stacked very Tetris y on a very stable flat surface. Do not worry. Squiggle says, Hope you've been good, Jim. What are you, Santa Claus now? What are you, Santa Claus? Jason Garcia is here, says, Sup, boys. For a second, I thought he said, Sup, fool. Manic Plastic is here. Welcome. Ian asks, Am I in the minority of liking Last Crusade over the other two indie films? I don't know that you're in the minority, but I don't hear it a lot. I enjoy Last Crusade quite a bit. Um, I loved Raiders, but when I, I saw it originally, I was a bit young. The first indie I saw was Temple of Doom. I saw it in the theater. Then we got a copy of Raiders on VHS. That became my favorite. Um, so, like, Temple was my first crush. Raiders is my favorite. Last Crusade was like a love letter to the other two. I love them all more or less equally, but if I have to pick one to watch, it's Raiders of the Lost Ark every time. Uh, and I love watching any of them. But when it comes to collecting toys of those properties, I would say that Raiders is number one, Temple of Doom is number two, Last Crusade is a distant third. Um, and it really boils down to what they're going to release from each of those films. That's for me. Um, you don't want to make you don't want to make the squiggles list. Okay. Hey Andy, good to see you. Good to see you. Epic Badger says, I added lighting and acrylic display stands to my shelves. More fun to pose and display figures. Yes, those are great. I need to keep getting more of those. I have a bunch. I need to get more. Speaking of more, let's take a look at some things that are on sale right now over at Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, if you're into SH Figure Arts figures, they got Winter Soldier, 50% off, 44 bucks. It's a good price if you like that figure. Uh, and they've got some Power Ranger stuff, some gear upgrades from like Diaclone and some other stuff. Um, I'm, but what I am seeing that's that's interesting to me is a lot of boss fight uh, figures, in, including this Hacks Skeleton blank for ten dollars. Um, you know, if you there's a, like a nice Transformers puzzle. It's a flash sale going on today. I'll post that link into chat. So if for any reason you want anything that we're showing here, you can get it. So that link in chat will take you right to this page. But now we get into some other stuff. Some new pre-orders coming out. Mythic Legions has a Necronominus deluxe figure for $70. Um, he's a big boy. And there's a lot of detail. And he looks pretty badass. It's a six-inch scale. All soft goods. It's a very interesting look. Um, but I saw it this morning and I was like, well, I better show it because this is pretty cool. But if you're into like, this is just I mean, top shelf stuff, a bit expensive for my personal taste, but man, is it cool? Uh, well, I was like, that's a deal. That's right. From where my course, my wife has more toys on display than I do. Ian Sweeney says, Sean Connery's Dr. Sun Senior's gold standard of casting decisions. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, someone sent me this. It's a quarter scale Lara Croft versus dinosaurs. Okay. Quarter scale, which means if she's, let's say she's five foot eight, that means that it's probably she herself is about a foot, foot and a half, you know, in, in length. And then the rest of this is whatever. So that's a, this is a big piece. And they want $1,500. To my knowledge, I only know one person who might even remotely consider getting something like this. But when we're talking about overpriced uh, stuff, I had to show this to you. So there you go. Um, so Bjorn, never assume you've seen what I'm going to show for the overpriced thing ever. You never know. I also have this overpriced thing. Got an SH Monster Arts Gigan for 129 which is the going rate for these things. Um I've always had a soft spot for Gigan. Um, if I can't have a King uh, Ghidorah, I definitely want a Gigan at some point in my collection. Um, that's just a cool, just a cool figure, and uh, he's able to do many, many things with no articulated digits whatsoever. He just has claws. I don't know how he holds a banana. I don't know how he does anything. I don't know. Also, way overpriced. Is six scale. Jake Sully for $350. I don't understand. I know it's hot toys. I know we've come to expect this kind of detail and price from them. I do not 
I, I will never understand the appeal of these things. Another thing I want to call your attention to, I want to thank Badger for letting me know about this. Um, this particular uh, company, Takara Tomi, Tomi Tech, they do a lot of six inch scale uh, weapons and racks and things like that. A lot of really cool stuff, actually. And they have a whole set of these different racks that you can link together to make like a big rack wall for your guns. And they're a little bit on the pricey side, but for those of you that have a bunch of weapons from, say, Action Force, and you really want a cool way to display them, these are very cool. And I would recommend those for sure. Well, I'm says, I would love if you did a show where you just tracked down people that bought these statues and interviewed them. I mean, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, of course, Garcia already pre-ordered the guy again. I'm not surprised. Largo wants no blue monkeys. Fair enough. Carl says, all things considered, I'd much rather have the Playmates Baragon. Fair. Ian Sweeney hasn't even watched the first Avatar movie. If you've seen uh, Fern Gully or you've seen uh, Dances with Wolves, then you've seen Avatar. Okay? That's just... That is a fact. That is a clear and present fact. So you're not really missing anything. No shade to, uh, to Jim Cameron, great filmmaker. Um, and I also went through some stuff that is in stock. So stuff you've probably already seen or already have, but for those of you who may have missed out or you want doubles, the super action stuff, Casket of Cruelty. It's a coffin, six-inch scale, comes with a bunch of weapons. you got chainsaws and machetes and cricket bats and baseball bats and eyeballs and bloody this and that and blast effects and crossbows and boxing gloves and nightsticks, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so if you're into that sort of a thing, it is in stock. You can get it. Definitely worth it. I have a lot of this stuff, uh, thanks to uh, Bill and uh, and Jesse, I believe, has also sent me some of this stuff in the past. Um, very cool stuff. And for me, definitely worth having around. If you do any sort of display, uh, have any sort of fun with your toys, these are these are just great to have. Love that. Love that company. So, <laughs> Wilmay Corbus says that $13,000 Final Fantasy statue is absurd. Who would buy that? It's sold out at BBTS. Um, I know one person that would probably buy that. One. And we have an astonishing X Men Marvel Legends Cyclops, which I'm sorely tempted on. I did pre order. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through with it or not, but I really like this particular costume. I, I got to be honest, I'm tempted just to buy him for the head, in all honesty, to buy him for the head um, and then maybe combine him with a different version of the figure to make like the Quinn, the penultimate Cyclops for me. And I don't even know why I'm so obsessed with this, this character, right? But I am. And so they put out a new Cyclops. I'm like, okay, I'll look at it. They also have an Emma Frost, which this is a very, very cool looking sculpt. Nothing that stands out to me about it as far as it being different sculpt-wise. Um, but for this particular character, I think it works. I would have much preferred soft goods for the the cape. And yeah, the, the uh, Chode uh, Build-A-Figure, while tempting, is not even close to being a priority for me. Um, but it is cool to see that it's there. There are many other figures in this line. I'll show you a couple. Star Jammer is kind of neat because you get that rapier with it. And um, I think it's a good sculpt for what he is. Nothing crazy going on. But it's cool. It's cool. I like it. It's fun. Nothing wrong with it. Then you get Manet St. Croix. Now, I don't know if there's anything about her sculpt that makes her any different aside from the boots. I think the boots are like just click on. So I think they're using the same buck that they've been using forever. Uh, I would defer to Badger on that. Um, but her head sculpt is very different because she has very long hair. Um, and I call attention to that because those of you that are customizers, if that's something you're into, you might want to take a look at it. <laughs> hey, Ben Stutley, good to see you. Uh, Bjorn says Cyclops looking to be hitting the weights. Yep. Keith Knight's here. Hey, Keith. Giraffe says he's got a Cobra logo slithering on his visor. I mean, a little bit. 
Um, he now shoots eye worms. Correct. Ozzy says, you said showed. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, Largo says, Emma Frost's bust is not the proper size. You are correct. That is correct, because she had a slightly larger bust in the comics, so that proves they're using the same bucks. Um, Largo says, Corsair is tempting. I kind of figured you would want one of those characters. Um, Rolando Flores says, sup, sup, sup. <laughs> anyway, so there's that. Now we get into something a bit different. So NECA... <sighs> has the universal monsters license and i saw recently this we, we went over on this very show um a dracula that's based on bella lugosi it's super expensive that didn't get the face right yet on what's a, essentially a bobblehead neca manages to get the sculpt right i don't understand why that is so difficult it just blew my mind i wanted to show it off because i'm like what they also have you know the wolfman who are these four? I don't get it. Oh, there's another X-Men I wanted to show off. You have Marvel's Chamber. So basically this guy, I guess, vomits fire. Or fire comes out of his shirt collar or something. But I do like the body. There's a lot of usefulness for that. I am tempted to get this figure to make a custom uh, Punisher out of him. So I have at least one Punisher in my collection. And I could probably get the head if I needed to. But uh, this, you know, I vomit fire guy. I don't mm, never. Mm. NECA or neck A. Yeah, I get you. I get you. you know, what the fuck is that? Is that a toy made by Pez Company? No, that's from NECA. Um, it's kind of crazy. Daniel Dorian in the house. Jason Garcia asks, why is this a thing? I don't know. I hate everything about it too, Badger. I hate everything about it as well. Logos Leo says, Eternals figures on clearance are customizer gold. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Neko making bobbleheads. What? Firebeard or something. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. All right. So now, uh, something I actually have pre-ordered. The Studio Series Core RC, which I believe is coming from the new film. It's not Studio 86 series. They've made her into a, a, a motorcycle. I'm like, well, that's cool. I'm sure they will make a uh, 86 studio series core version of her. They haven't, um, they should, but in case they don't, I am getting this one because I like me some RC very, very much. Also, uh, you have a Terracon freezer, which is just cool. Like even if you're not into, you know, some of these designs, like this is kind of neat. I'm on the fence about this one, to be honest. Um, He's just kind of there, but he looks cool. So I'm, I'm on the fence about this one, but check him out. Now, it was only a matter of time before we saw more Disney stuff on Big Bad. And we did see the Eeyore last week. Uh, I see the Snow White and Seven Dwarves. Uh, it's just like a diorama scene. There's no posing of it at all. Uh, it is nine and a half inches tall, so it's not small. But it's $104, and unless you're a huge fan of this film... I don't know why you would get this, but there it is. But you also have Pooh Bear, who is 3.18 inches tall. He's a perfect little poo for $24. It's resin, hand-painted. I don't know why is that much, but he's cute. But honestly, it's probably the, uh, the license, as many people are about to say in chat. Uh, and also, for those of you who have been striking out uh, at retail or online for... for the, this particular Motu Origins vehicle, Roton is available for pre-order uh, on Big Bad Toy Store. So, if you've been having a hard time finding it, you know you can get it from these guys. They have them in stock. It's the same price as retail, and it's supposed to arrive this month, which means it'll probably arrive next month. But still, if you haven't been able to get it, there you go. He's right there, ready for you to purchase. So I know some people were having a hard time finding it. I was having a hard time. Uh, some folks stepped up. I believe it was uh, Badger that was the one that ultimately stepped up. Thank you. Uh, everyone was looking. Um, but I, it's always a matter of who pulls the trigger on it. 
And I believe it was Badger that sent it. might have been Bjorn. I lose track, and I'm a horrible person, and I apologize. But I'm glad to have it. Can confirm it's well worth it. But there you go. <sighs> he called the shit poo. That's a good thing. Last pre-order related thing I want to talk about before we go full tilt into this discussion. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Frogmonger, tomorrow, we'll see if his pre-order lasts. Over on Mattel Creations, uh, the Frogmonger character, who has never been a, a figure before, he's always been in the stickers on Castle Grayskull. Uh, fans were like, gimme, gimme, gimme. So they're doing it, and... I gotta be honest, it's a cool looking figure. They're doing some things they haven't done before. Uh, no, he does not come with a blast effect. That is something they made for the diorama, but he does have a jet pack and a cool ray gun. So, pretty stoked on having this guy around. Uh, I will be taking a swipe at it tomorrow and hoping all goes well. So, if you weren't aware of it, it goes tomorrow. Launches at uh, noon Eastern Standard Time noon eastern standard time if you're looking for it so i have no patience for these nerds giraffe says may it rain frogs or everyone i hope so too yeah jason garcia i'm not even gonna address that i'm not even gonna address that shit if people want to talk shit they're gonna get shot that's just how it is <laughs> Karen Ball says, thanks. You show me nothing that I want. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Sorry. Um, or frog, I guess. As, oh, Leon's here. Hey, Leon. Says, I just started reading the Fables comics as I'm highly anticipating Wolf Among Us 2. Toys of that series would be cool, but I imagine Disney might kick off a toy line. That's true. And they have the, the means to do it, so I hope that something better happens. Um, you know. Bill says, sharks with lasers of the future. Could be. Could be. Largo's letter asks, why would Frogmonger wear shorts? Modesty, sir. Modesty. Do, do you not have any? Because Frogmonger has modesty. Okay, he has modesty. It's all right. It's okay. Giraffe says sharks with lasers and jetpacks. Yeah. So when it comes to um, the frog monger, okay, for me the big question is: Are we going to see something similar to Space Sumo, where this figure is actually attainable for a while, um, indicating they've made some big changes to how bots can work and so forth? Um, I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to treat it like I treat every single Mattel Creations thing. I'm going to get in there right away and try to get it done. My goal is to get one for myself and one for Bill Wifta. And that's that's the thing. That's what we're trying to do. Trying to make that happen. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. Celebrate Lunar New Year with Barbie. Badger says, keep frog. Now adding Motu Bunny and Duck. Let's combine Motu and Bucky here. I mean, I'd be okay with that, honestly. I'd be happy to see more Angamals, even though they don't make sense. I'd be happy to see them. Monty's overrated, poison, need to breathe. All right, all right. I mean, everyone, everyone's different. Everyone's different, right? Plundor. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So. At this point, we're going to get into the... Um, the main topic, like I said. So storage versus display. And certainly on a sideline, we're talking also about, you know, playing with your toys to a certain degree, right? Because everyone has a different approach to this stuff. And um, I, I just feel like there's no wrong way to do it. Um, if people want to stay mint on card or complete in box or whatever the case may be, that that's, I understand it. Um, I don't necessarily condone it in as much as I think toys and games should be played with. Uh, but on the same token, if that's what you choose to do, that's okay. 
And I think in that case, displaying them is the only thing you should be doing with those things. And I cannot, uh, if people get things complete in box, mint on card and don't display them, why do you have them? That's the big question I have at that point. Um, Logic Blaster says, so many toys I don't need to buy. Jim, you're saving me running right now. Thank you. No problem. No problem at all. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Yours eventually going to have a custom door made to hold all your Lego minifigures. Why couldn't you have a custom piece made that just fits on any door? You know? I, I'm i asking because you're eventually going to live in a different place, I would guess. And you want that piece to go with you. You don't want to like take a door off the hinges and hope it fits in the next door frame. Just build something that goes over the door. Just my thought. Knights of Olds here. Welcome. Says, I enjoy displaying my toys way more once I got some nice lit display cabinets. Okay. Largo likes rotating displays. Keeps collecting fresh. Reminds you of the stuff you've lost in storage. Mm. I get you. My goal is to display everything. And we'll see. I don't know how well it's going to go uh, in an apartment. I, I'm willing to bet that that's almost impossible. Um, so I will be rotating. Like the Motu is always going to be there, and I'll want to strive to have everything out from Motu Origins. Uh, superpowers will always be out. Action Force and uh, Classifieds as well. But I think where you're going to see the most rotation is anything else. So Marvel Legends, there will be some things that will always be there, but the rest of the figures will rotate. But any other toy lines I have, I really feel are going to have a lot of rotation on them. Um, I don't want to do that, but when I have limited space, that's what I'm going to have to do. Once we buy a house, we're purpose buying a place big enough for everything, and we're going to try and make that happen. Uh, now, granted, in all practicum, right, practicality, right, to do the show properly, I would need to do it in a room that that functions as an office. There's no way I'm going to like have a separate setup just in the collection room, though that may happen. Um, I would want to have some display stuff in the office. Um, and I have some ideas of how I want to do it. I do have some, what I regard are like signature pieces that kind of hint at what's in other rooms. Um so like the hush stuff so like the hush batman hush superman my masterverse figures that i that i have the ones i'm getting as well um the uh mezco spider-man that i have marvel select green goblin going with him and a few other pieces those will go in a special display case in the living room so that there's a, something that's representative so that you don't have to go into this office space to see my toys uh, or go into a larger collection room and things like that. Now, in buying a house, that stuff might end up making it into an office, as opposed to having the office be a main display space, right? So, in other words, there might be a, like a dedicated collection room, living room, dining room, arsenal, cracking room. I get you. Um, I don't know yet. Like, I'm I'm far away from that. And, and I was thinking about that this morning, and that's part of where this thing came from. Because I would like to have as much of my collection nearby for the majority of my day. And I spend most of my time at my desk for my day job, also doing this stuff for you guys and for Resurrection Toys. So it would make sense to have certain things around me. So part of my brain says Motu Origins all, would all go in the office with some other Keystone stuff, and the rest of the collection goes in the main room. I don't know yet. Um, but I'm just trying to figure out where my brain's at. So I wonder what you guys have. So, um, Ian Sweeney, uh, like to start a display with a playset, populate said playset with figures. It's a good place to start for sure. Uh, because the free chamber is not that far away from me. So, and I realized the other day, I was thinking out loud, like, holy shit, I got all Star Wars figures I don't even think about, but I have plenty for the Bespin, because I have like three or four Bespin guards. I've got Lando, I've got Lobot, I've got Darth Vader, I've got Boba Fett. Um, the only things I'm really missing at this point are, I've got R2-D2, I have a C-3PO, but I would like a vintage collection C-3PO, and I found the one I want, I know where he's at, I need to pick him up sometime in the next couple of weeks. 
but I also need Luke and Bespin Luke, Bespin Han, Bespin Leia, and another. I think I need another Chewbacca. I have a Chewbacca. I think he's vintage collection. I'll have to double check. And if he is, then I'm done. So basically, it would just be Han, Leia, Luke, and that's pretty much all the figures I need. I want to get some Ugnaughts. I'll be getting those from Power of the Force 2. Uh, I'd probably get a bunch of those just because you want to populate that area. Um, and then probably find some figures that would work for like the odd civilians. And then everything else is vehicles and the playset after that. But that's going to be a huge display in and of itself. And there's no way that's going to fit into an office area that would have to be in a dedicated collection room, like a converted garage or something like that. Uh, Argo says to buy a Godzilla shaped house, then Zilla's always on display. I like the way you think. Uh, Rolo says the Motus will only watch your program blinded and always feel FOMO rising. And I mean, now I'm fair. And this is why I leave the boxes up so you can't see all the Motu stuff, right? Um, Logic boxes, I'm gradually archiving my collection in the form of videos, then packing them away. Whenever I need to look at them, I can just rewatch the video instead of pulling them out of storage. That both makes a lot of sense, but it makes me sad a little bit. But I get it. I get it, man. It's kind of like how I feel about some video games. Like some games I'll never replay, but because I streamed them or I recorded myself playing them, I get to go back to that experience. Definitely. Uh, shoe holders on the door. That's a good thing, too. Yeah, I like that. Staple some baseball car holders to the door and ship the minifigure. Um, that's good. Um, Bjorn likes the way Largo does his display with art behind the figures. I also like that. I'm probably going to steal that. <laughs> Kraken, guardian of the crapper. There you go. Giraffe says, isn't there a giant Godzilla in Topio up against a building? Yes, there is. Uh, there's several large Godzilla sculptures uh, and architecture in Japan. There's one, there's a few of them I really like. Um, Largo said, we need treasure for trigger to take some pictures of all the Godzilla stuff in Japan. Yes, yes, we do. I would love that very much. Knights of Old says, asking, is this display worthy before buying saves you time? It may save you money. I, I agree. And I've kind of gotten to that point, to be honest. Um, where I was in a frenzy for the first year and a half of collecting, which is where I'm at. I've been collecting for a year and a half now. And I've kind of come to some decisions when it comes to displaying toys. So, for example, I, I went on a, a tirade with the, the patrons this weekend about how the core class does not disappoint me when it comes to Transformers. I absolutely adore them. And... I've been after a third-party Unicron for a while. It's hard for me to justify pulling the trigger on it. Um, but if I do, that third-party Unicron, as big as he is, and the core class scale is perfect. Plus the fact that Hasbro seems to really be invested in expanding the, the core class line, I'm not that many figures away from what I would consider a bare-bones, bare what I need to be happy, right? So I'm going to continue to double down on core class, get a Unicron and have those as a display. So instead of a playset, you'll have Unicron, which is essentially a playset. And then the whole thing goes around that. And that would be super freaking cool. Now I do have a, I have the, the Voyager scale Starscream, the Coronation Starscream. I've got a sound wave in that scale. Uh, and there's about three or four more characters that I really, really want in that scale. Once I have those, those will probably also go into the, um, you know, that showcase display, like the nice, just a, here's a taste kind of thing. So I've kind of flipped the lid a little bit because the more of the core class I get, the more I like them and the more it makes sense with a Unicron to display that way. So um, Shane says, I have an almost complete G.I. Joe collection trying to find a place for all of its challenging. It's taking over your apartment, the flag has more room than your bed. I get it. I get it. Kieran says, anyone thinking of having an office collection room, check out the YouTube special episode of Leicester. And I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Leicester Vintage Toy Shop featuring UK TV celebrity Jonathan Ross. Okay. Right on. Ian says, another option for Ugnos to be repainted retro collection. Kui. That's a good point. It's a question of what's cheaper. And right now, the Power of the Force 2 stuff it's pretty cheap, and you get two of them in the in the in the box. But I would look at that. 
it w- it'd be worth getting a, a, a quill. It'd be worth getting one of those just to repaint and to have like a featured Ugnot. But I like that idea. Thank you for bringing that up. Ben says, all my toys were in storage, sadly, except uh, re- re- remote control cars, which have start- started racing again. So that bit's good. That is good. Anything you can do. You know, because all my stuff is stored. All of it. All of it. Every last bit, except for like bits and bobs that are on the table over there, which I have to move. Um, so I get it. Largo's layer says Unicron eats core class. I don't know if the third party ones are meant to swallow it or not, but I do know the Hasbro Pulse one did, which is not the one I want. Um, Fuck you, Rolo. Just because I've only been collecting toys for 18 months, I brought my sensibilities to collecting every other goddamn thing in the universe to this. Calm down. Probably would never have lost the taste for it had my parents not got rid of all my stuff when I was a kid. But that's okay. Not their fault. Not your fault. Not my fault. Let's just go. Jason Garcia says, Studio Cell Unicron. That's the one I'm looking at. It's worth it. Multiple color variants and most screen accurate, even more than Hazab Uni. I agree. That's why I want that one. I definitely want the Studio Cell Unicron. For sure. Um, There's a couple other ones I've seen that are good, but that one is great. It's really good. And yes, it it, it actually transforms. It's really cool. I I really dig that that whole thing. Um, For sure. But that's the thing. You start to think about, um, like, Knights of Old brings up loving the vintage Joe boxes, struggling to find room to display those. I struggle with that with the Origin stuff, for example. You know, I have all my vehicle boxes. Some of them are flattened. Some of them are not. And I want to keep them. But I'm not sure how I want to go about displaying them. And there's a certain point where I will probably cut the artwork off or cut around, you know, do something. I don't know what yet, um, because I definitely am keeping an intact Castle Grayskull box. And when I get Snake Mountain, I'm keeping the intact Snake Mountain box. I'm going to seal it with Velcro and display those prominently. Then the question becomes, do I really need the rest of the boxes? I don't. Um, So I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. I will probably keep them flattened somewhere unless I have the space to just display them all around like like along the ceiling or something. Like if I have a space that big, well, then there's no reason not to. But for now, with all the practical space that I don't have, it is something that wears on my brain. I like getting box stuff sometimes. Some boxes I don't give a shit about. Um, some boxes I really care about, like the Superpowers Collection stuff, the new stuff. That's the whole only reason I'm collecting them, in all honesty, is the boxes. And the cards. So I'm not taking any of the figures off the cards. Um, although I might take some of the characters that were never released in Superpowers. I might get a double of those to display with my super my loose superpower stuff. But I want to have a carded collection of those on the wall. I want to display all the uh vehicle boxes and so forth. Because I've I've kind of come to the conclusion I'm not getting uh, a Hall of Justice box. Unless I just luck out at a, a, a yard sale and someone's like, you want this 10 bucks? Like, that's as close as I think I'll get. Bjorn asked when Snake Mountain is coming out. It's supposed to be fall or winter of this year. So it's not even up for pre-order yet. So we don't know for sure. Logic Blaster, I agree. Power of the Force 2 really grew on me. Um, Power of the Jedi is pretty good too. And that's where I'm going to be filling in a lot of my collection. But when it comes to um, Star Wars in particular, my main focus with the three and three quarter is just a complete populated Bespin. So I'm using Joe Dickerson's, uh, his playset, and then I'm filling that up with just the vehicles I need and the characters I need. And then I'm also getting in the Black Series some specific characters that I want, again, for like a feature display. But that's kind of where my Star Wars is going to begin and end, because Bespin is my favorite part of, of Star Wars, period. Um, I was tempted by some of the Return of the Jedi stuff, but not really. Um, although he is making that blockade runner, which makes me go, ah, should I do the blockade runner as well? So my thing is, if he does that, I'm, when he finishes that, I might get one of those as well. And I'm hoping, 
against all hope, I'm hoping that he'll do an Emperor's Throne Room for Return of the Jedi. And if he does that, and then you got the trifecta, I would get all three and populate all three. But for now, Bespin. And I don't know when the hell I'm going to complete that. Um, World by Carver asks, what item in your collection would you say you must display and what hap what item would you be happy to store in a box? Okay, so box versus storage container. So um, I would say that an item in my collection that I say must display is the Hall of Justice from Superpowers Collection, period. That was my grail from early on. It's still one of my favorite pieces. I don't get to look at it enough. I have to display that along with all my superpower stuff. That's got to be a thing. It's huge. Very important. As far as happy to store something in a box, ironically enough, it would probably be the new superpower stuff. Like, I plan to get out those vehicles and use them. Um, but I'm happy to have them in the box. Um that would be the, the big the big thing. Because I have like a dark side destroyer box, but I'm gonna take him out and fill up the box with foam and display that. But as far as like stuff that I don't I, I like having but don't necessarily need to have out, um, that's a tough one. Um with very few exceptions, none of which I can think of off the top of my head. Um there's nothing that I don't want to have out because the stuff that doesn't fit into like mainline collections that I have, like Mego, those are gifts from people that I love. I want those out. Every Mego I own, every last one's a gift from someone I, that, I, that I really appreciate. So I want all those Migos out. They, I have to display those. Um, otherwise, at my philosophy, it's like, well, I don't, those would be good for rotation. And no, they got to be out. So, um, Rollo asks about my thoughts on the Dungeons and Dragons figures. They're overpriced. There's a ton of people get, getting them broken. And when they ask for replacements, they're getting random figures, not the ones that they actually bought. Hasbro was mismanaging this. It was This was an easy slam dunk for them. It should have been an easy pile of money for them. Had they not priced it so high, and had there been any quality control on it, this would have been perfect. And it would have laid the path to getting a six inch Tiamat, but we're not going to get that now because there's too much bad press with the fucking figures. You watch. Um, you got a land speeder is always on display. Okay. All right. Um, Logic Bus said Bespin's a good choice to focus on. Lots of stuff happens there. I agree. I agree. And with the work that Joe did on that, on Bespin World, is just phenomenal. Um, so it's a really good way of getting a focused amount of figures that's not small. Um, and you can have a lot of fun with that without having to feel like you need everything, which was the big problem I was trying to solve because I wanted Star Wars very bad. Um, so it's a good way to display everything and, and make it happen. So I'm very, very cool with it. Ian Sweeney says, the only items I would be happy to have in storage are spares and partial figures used to be used in customs. Fair enough. Ben Sully says, when I do get a toy display, I'm thinking loose figures behind glass because I'm lazy at dusting. Nothing wrong with that. All of the shelving that I'm looking at, and I mean all of it, what I'm thinking about doing is create, like, because I want to get more industrial kind of shelving because I have more, more adjustment to it. It's more open if I want it to be. But I'm going to custom make these plexiglass like real thin, like flexible plexiglass covers, I'm gonna fucking super glue magnets to them and then magnet it all the way across the shelves and on the sides so that uh, they're safe from clumsy, clumsy partners and clumsy pets and clumsy guests. Uh, so they're covered, somewhat dust protected, and uh, but I still have the option to open them up when I want. So, like, for example, I would take the plexi off for every show, so it's just there, and, you know, if I, it's an extended period where I don't have to worry about anyone coming in or whatever, like, I just like seeing stuff, but I want to have that option to protect things. It's something that's in my head. 
Um, Jason Garcia says, one I would display if I could afford it would be the gigantic X plus Shin Godzilla. It's amazing and huge. You know, I, I think that that model of the character gets so little attention. I love that movie very, very, very much. Um, and I would love, love to get my hands on one of those. But, you know, it, it's one of these things that it, it happens, I guess. Um, where they just didn't do enough stuff with it, in my opinion. But I hope you find one at a price that you feel is reasonable, man. I really do. Well, Meta Cardboard says, My Shogun Warriors Godzilla and Transformers 6 Shot are always on display. And two giant 33-gallon plastic boxes are Army Men, Pirate Space Men, another two and a quarter-inch plastic figures. Nice! Nice! Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, Ben, it is e easier to, to dust a flat surface. So if I do that and I do it right, that means only the top shelf would need to be dusted. Well, those are probably where um, the aforementioned Castle Grayskull boxes are going to be. Um, to also have some, some fairly robust dusting I'll need to do, but it won't be as much. So, for sure. Ian Sweeney says, I think my ultimate display will be a full-on, most icy cantina of money where no object. I would love to see that. Kieran Ball says, I recently had to move my collection to fit a new carpet, only to discover that several of my on-display rare action figures had actually been sun-damaged. Oh. That is the worst. So, and this is, this is part of why, and I insist on this everywhere I go. If I do not have blackout curtains, or even if I do, um, especially in an apartment, but definitely when we buy a house, there's this reflective film you can put in your windows. So it, it, it filters out UV light. It also creates tinting, also creates privacy. So no one can see in, you can see out, but it's tinted, and it keeps away heat, keeps away UV, because I am mortified. Uh, of, of sun damage mortified of that stuff i'm sorry to hear that that happened to you uh bjorn says when i have the space i'm going to make a space port to display my various figures something similar to empire toy works and many others there you go logic blaster has a whole shelf devoted to hoth power the force 2 did tons of stuff for it including the at at snow speeder rebel base tauntaun wampa and so forth epic badger says displaying figures at high altitude means no threat of humidity that's fair very fair so, folks, we have but uh, but eight, barely eight minutes left in the stream. So uh, even though we have kind of devolved into it, it's definitely a free-for-all. If there's anything you want to talk about, ask me. We'll go back and forth. It's no problem. Daniel Carhoun is here. Nice to see you. I am drinking water, by the way. Kind of going over time on the water the next couple of days for a lot of different reasons. Um, not the least of which is that I kind of fell away from drinking water at the level I was drinking. I was going through a like a five-gallon bottle in like five days. So, and I've 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 pulled away from that. Uh, I kind of screwed myself on the habit, so I'm trying to get back to it because I feel much better when I do that. Food tastes better when I do that. Everything's better when I do that. So, I am drinking all the water. All the water. Yep, that's me. So, mm. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, thank you. So, you know... The big question here is how it affects your enjoyment. So in my case, everything I own is stored. Even the stuff that's on that shelf is in package for display purposes. All of my loose stuff are in crates. And I never see over 95% of it. I just never get to see my stuff. It makes me forget what I have. It, 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 it makes me disconnected from the joy of the hobby. And it really... It hurts because you feel like I'm spending all this money. I'm not getting that much enjoyment out of it because for me, it's, it's, it's less about the hunt. 
and it's more about having it. I like the having it part. <laughs> I really like the having it part. Um, so me wanting to display things is really, it's really important. I'm way past due getting to that, that literal and, and mental place where I can display these things. So it's, um, that's why I wanted to talk about this to let you know, like it affects me a lot. Like it bothers me. Like I look at, I look in my, at my, my face on camera. I see all those boxes. I'm like, fuck. Hurts. I also realize that is one of the biggest first world problems that could ever exist. Oh, he has so many toys. He doesn't get to see them. I am grateful for the toys I have. I am grateful for the community that I have. I just know that I need to be working harder at getting into a position where that's no longer an issue. So, but I am. So, it's coming. I have no choice. I have to get this stuff moving because I am spending way too much money being here for the benefit of getting out of it, even though they're very, they're beautiful and wonderful and nice here. Uh, it's time to move on. The rates have gotten to a point where there's no reason not to move. So, it's going to happen. Rolo says, not displaying hurts sometimes. Oh, Ari and Pilot and says, not displaying hurts sometimes. I don't know the song. Bjorn says, right now, a large chunk of my collection is storage. Totally get it. Totally get it. Logic Blaster asks if I'm excited for Mandalorian Season 3 in March. Uh, I don't watch trailers, so I tend to, to stay away from that. Am I excited for it? Yeah, I am. I like Mandalorian. I haven't seen any Mandalorian that I didn't like, frankly. Really like it. Um... I am curious to see where it goes. Uh, and I feel like they have more potential with that than any of the potential films that may or may not be coming down the road. Um, but yes, I'm very excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. I do not like the weekly release stuff. One thing that just premiered was Last of Us on HBO Max. I adore that game series. I love the messages in that game series. I love the storytelling of that game series. And by all, by most accounts, the, the Last of Us series, it, it hits on what it hit, needs to hit on, but gives you even more story, which is what it needed to do. I don't know if it's on a weekly release or if I can binge it, but I'm super excited for that because that'll be very cool. Um, <laughs> Go to Tron says... To have in storage is better than to not have. Toy Fuchsia's famous toy philosopher. <laughs> I agree. Uh, Ian Sweeney says, I subbed to Disney Plus yesterday. You can finally watch what I want without help from friends. Yar, yar. I like that. I dig it. Ben Tully says, I like Jim Largo's idea of partial storage. You have to rotate to see it all. I like that too. Um, I just, I, as much as I like that idea, I know myself. I know myself well enough to know my brain will operate best if I just have everything out. Cause that's how I am about CDs, vinyl movies. Like when you guys see, when I show you the, like the shelving and the amount of movies I actually have on Blu-ray or on disc, when you see them all in one place, you're going to be like, what is wrong with this guy? So all of my other collections is like, I want it all in front of me. I want to know exactly what I have and toys. I am, I'm trying to do the same thing. Even though I like the idea of rotation, I just, my brain won't let me do it. Jason Garcia says, as someone who's had their collection boxed up for the last two plus years, super depressing, knowing I can't surround myself with my addiction. Largo Slayer with another very poignant thing says, man who stand on toilet, high on pot. You know, kids, I think that's a good thing to go out on. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being the best community ever. But I have to close out with Kieran Ball as well. And the rest of you, as long as I have it in my collection, it can go on display or say tucked away in a storage tub. They're my precious. But Largo, I want it all. And I want it now. A little queen for you. That's it. Thank you for being here. I love this, doing this show for you guys every week. We will see you very soon with some videos. But if nothing else... May all your card backs be straight. May all your grinds be merry. Maybe you'll find anything you're looking for at any given time at a price you feel is reasonable. Take care, folks. I love you. We'll see you next week.